Everybody has heard about robots, right? It's like Isaac Asimov have made it a household concept. And he was one of the people who described robots not only as unfriendly industrial things, but as friends. Hans Moravec is a researcher and a writer who has been involved for a long time with robots, mind children, and you are now kind of sounding out the future of robotics. One of your ideas is that if the current progress in technological uh, computer uh, speed and so on goes on, say, in the foreseeable future we will have robots that are more intelligent than human beings. That's right. Um, yeah, my, in fact, the projection has been coming closer because the uh, progress in, in, uh, in computer performance has actually accelerated in the last decade. But certainly, I see no reason why we won't have machines that are at least equal to human beings uh, well within, well before the middle of the, of the coming century. So, 20, 30, 40 years. The technology of uh, robots is one part, but what about the psychology of robots? Well, um, I have a, a general argument that says that, in fact, it's not going to be as hard as it, as it has looked for a while. Um, and the, 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 the core of the argument is an analogy with the evolution of human brains, or you know, large brains in general, which was that it took about 500 million years to get from uh, simple, very simple uh, co combinations of neurons, you know, from the invention of the neuron, basically, until moderately large nervous systems, nervous systems comparable to insect nervous systems. Um, and, and our ancestors at one point were not insects, but they were on the scale of insects. They were some, some kind of worms, basically, that, that had nervous systems comparable to, to insect nervous systems. And there were, there were a number of steps after that, but, but essentially each, each, uh, each major innovation happened faster than the previous one. Um, you know, to go from, from, uh, from our ancestors who had one-tenth of our brain size to, to our brain size, was only a few million, 500 million, but you know, less than five. Um, and to go from, from something the size, you know, smaller to them was, was, uh, was only about 10, 20 million years. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to get from, to the mouse from something that, that was uh, closer to a worm, you know, was, was 50, 100 million years. Each, each step is, is faster. What it see, what's happened is that the basic components are worked out in a simple system, the, the basic techniques, and then they're simply multiplied in, in number, and you get a working system. We, we see this uh, in, in computer developments all the time. We see this in computer developments uh, all, all the time, in that once certain uh, subroutines are it's then possible to build a larger scale systems by calling the, the actual module in the first place. You had to consider the modules as your basic parts of, of combinations of, of uses of the modules. And, and if the modules are approximately the right thing, uh, sometimes the most obvious combinations are the ones that are the right ones anyway. And the same thing, I mean, we already see it. it, it at, we see the beginning stages of it in, in robot programming and, and robot and robot sensing. Uh, the museum is closing. The yes. <laughs> yep. um, and, and robot sensing. Mm -hmm. uh, that once you know, once we solve the problem of doing stereoscopic, that does something interesting, given that it can see stereoscopically. It was hard to get the stereoscopic vision working in the first place, but it's actually easier to build a robot that does something complicated using stereoscopic vision. Your, your vision feels like a monodimensional extension of the technology we've seen, say, since the 1800s, since rationalism came and, and you project this into the future. Now, what you must have had many conversations with many different people. What do priests or, you know, spiritual people 
I ask you, how do you relate to their Well, I think question. they must... Um, well, mostly I think they... <laughs> mostly I think they, they, uh, they dismiss my, my reasoning. It just doesn't fit into their, way, their world model. So, so no, that's not the question. The question is, how do you relate to them? To them? Um, they, they probably think you're crazy and they, that you are a techno... Uh, yes, well, um, I, I have a very long answer to, to, to that question, actually, but, uh, but I don't, you know, you know, you'll find it in the book, uh, in, in that, well, I'll give you a, a hint, um, in that, in fact, this whole line of thinking that, that I'm engaging in seems to lead to a rather strange conclusion, which is that if you can if you can simulate a mind in a in a computer uh, then the, the funny thing about about the simulation is that that the simulation is actually an interpretation of what the computer is doing you know the fact that there's a mind in there is just a reading of of what's happening with the numbers mm -hmm. that are going on there um, and other interpretations are possible and other implementations of any given simulation are possible Ultimately, there's no limit to how, what interpretation you can make of, of any process. Uh, so if I believe that a real mind can exist in a simulation, I actually have to admit that it can exist in anything because there's always an interpretation in which I can see that mind in the thing. This leads to a kind of platonic position in which all possibilities exist, uh, in, including uh, things that are, that are far beyond the material. Uh, you know, the material world, in fact, is a very special case. It's, I told you it's a long story. And it's, I, it's, I, it's a long story. I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't develop it, uh, develop in, it here. In, in but but, but, but it, 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 it provides a rather interesting framework for the existence of anything, for existence. Uh, one, one very quick uh, way, way to, to say one of the conclusions is that we don't really exist. We only think we do. <laughs> and some of this kind of thinking is, is actually very similar to to uh, the, uh, some kinds of theological thinking. Uh, so, I, so I don't accept you know, any particular theology, um, but the, the, the sort of abstract thinking about the nature of existence you know, and, 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 our, and, our, and our existence in particular that, uh, that led, led up to some of those theological positions, mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually have... More practical. Do you, do you think that robots it will be, able, or whatever, thinking machines will be able to have mystical visions? Oh, absolutely, they already have them, because any kind of uh, virtual reality simulation is a, vir is a mystical vision. <laughs> you know, it, it's a non-physical thing with all that. Only what's embedded in the, in the simulation is just like a dream. Uh, so, you know, so, 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 you know, th these, these uh, reality games <laughs> Are, are essentially mystical visions that the computers are having. They, they don't have the intelligence to really interpret them properly within the computer, so, so the humans have to sort of help along to provide the meaning, but, but, but that's the first thing. In fact, making, a, making the thinking of a robot conform to physical reality is, is actually very hard. It's easier to have the thinking go off on its own tangents and Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so the answer is uh, yes, definitely. Uh, yeah. Early in the, well, I think in the middle of the, 1800, of, of the 1900s, what was it, the 19th century, Jules Verne that was one of the first who came with a practical, technical future view. He dreamed about um, rockets, and they were very simple, you know. Uh, like well, well, a cannon. And, and yeah, exactly. It wasn't exactly rockets. That was that was the one thing. Oh, yeah, the rocket actually hadn't been invented yet. <laughs> no, he, he I mean, I mean, not, not, not the rocket as, as space travel. Of course, the rocket is. As, but anyway, uh, he had an idea that influenced the world because people started building bigger ships, and there was a whole uh, movement coming from that. Yeah, it, it was synergistic because, of course, Jules Verne got his inspiration from the emerging industrial technology. So, so, uh, so he inspired some people to drink, to think a little bigger, and but yeah. but also his, his, his the tools for his stories came from things people were actually discovering. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't have made his stories without the steam engine, you know, and without electricity. Okay. Along those lines came uh, many many people, but uh, Isaac Asimov 
must certainly be someone who inspired you with his uh, I like robotic yeah, yeah, I certainly read the, uh, the robotic, the, his robot stories. Um, all work was, uh, the war had consumed you know, all the excess productivity, but after the war, there were all, all these new machines, you know, automated assembly lines and things like that. And it looked more and more likely in the 50s and in the 60s that work was going to become obsolete uh, you know, by the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't. Uh, it wasn't. Well, one of the reasons it wasn't is because the Cold War came to absorb the excess productivity, an immense amount of production machinery of the Cold War. Uh, and, and, and the, uh, you know, they were or, or astoundingly large in scale, and yet the, and the techniques by which they were made were astoundingly labor-intensive, you know, in terms of the engineering talent, just absorbed. Uh, so the Cold War is, you know, sort of winding down, is that now suddenly this excess productivity is starting to hit us in the face. So well, is it applied to cyber wars? Well, yeah, uh, certainly another big example of, of a way to absorb excess productivity, um, entertainment of, you know, all sorts. So, so yes, but nevertheless, uh, there, there, there are employment crises in all the developed countries. Mm -hmm. Another person that, that influenced the direction is Bill Gibson, or actually uh, Vernon Vinge, which is idea of two names, and with the word cyberspace. Um, he described, or they described, a thing that didn't exist at the time they described it, but it came into being. Don't you feel that your work, by describing really a future, well, helps to make this become a reality. Well, yeah, and uh, but besides that, I, I also have a laboratory, and, <laughs> and we're working on nuts and bolts level to bring it to reality as well. Mm -hmm. But but either way, cer certainly the vision is a reason why I'm enthusiastic about the work. The the vision. Uh, well, I, I actually would not not that I wouldn't necessarily say it came first because I was tinkering, you know, at the same time I was reading and at the same time I was fantasizing. So, so so there it's a synergism. And, and it's normal, I think, for any kind of enterprise. You know, you, you have you have some goal in your mind, you know, that you work to accomplish. Isn't it? Don't you feel it? It's like a, a fight between your vision and the vision vision of, say, the people that want a green world or going back to nature. Uh, I, from time to time, but most mostly, I just, you know, I do my thing and they do their thing, and some, sometimes things that look like major differences eventually become not such a terrible difference at all. You know, robots are are often very useful in environmental contexts, you know, for instance. Uh, yeah. But, 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 but in, indeed, the, the, there is a, sort of a, a philosophical opposite in direction. There's, there's some radical uh, sort of green types who would really like to see the world go back into, into Stone Age times, you know, the way we lived then. And, and uh, certainly I'm pointing the opposite direction, I would say. Um, However, once we become rich and capable enough, you know, in terms of our general economy, including basically the machines, I think we will be able to recapture a lot of the, the, the uh, green world that the greens would like, simply because we'll be rich enough to do so. Uh, uh, the, the technology will be efficient enough that, uh, you know, it, it'll be unobtrusive. Either, either it'll, it'll just recycle on a microscopic scale or else, um, or else it'll be done somewhere else, like in space. So you don't feel you're on a collision course with the rest of the world? Uh, with, with the Greens or with the, uh, the people? Who well, to be honest, I think the, the Greens are the ones who are swimming the other direction. But, but uh, the rest of the world is moving my way. I mean, the computers are the, are the largest industry on Earth at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there, many of the things that are going on in computers mm -hmm. right now are things that were wild fantasies. You know that we had in the 60s and 70s that I, that I wanted. You know, I, I mean, the World Wide Web is a dream come true, <laughs> and 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 we we talked about it. We wrote articles about something like that in the 70s. You know, a way in which uh, every book in the world would become available to anybody at any time, in which uh, anybody with a good idea could publicize it to the world at no cost. You know, through through a network of computers. Nelson's, uh, uh, well, it was before Nelson even, you know, I mean, it was one of, uh, John McCarthy was one of my advisors, and he's been writing about that since the 50s, you know, that Nelson was a youngster, you know. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm sure you have somewhere in the back of your mind a name for your first 
home robot. You've been describing a, a vacuum cleaning robot. Do you have a name for it? No. You haven't yet. I, 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 I'm uh, I, at the moment. I'm 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 uh, I've been going back and forth with my editor for a new book on the title of the new book. I don't think uh, I th you know I think the marketing department is going to probably decide what the robot is what called. Is your, what is your idea the title would be? I don't have a, I actually honestly haven't given it any thought. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm thinking of how to build it, but not you know what. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but your book will have a name. Oh, the book. Uh, it's, it's, it does, I don't know. <laughs> my child? Or? Well, well one, uh, my, my, my working title for many years, I had some problems I'm in, with a different publisher. It's another long story. But, but um, that, I, that I was just, it was a draft. Um, the, a title I had was Mind Age, uh, because th that was the third, third major age in, in this chronological development. There was the age of robots and the age of mind. Before that, you know, is sort of the the age of unintelligent machines, um, but but uh, that one, apparently for marketing reasons, you know, is is too uh, it, too, too too ambiguous. You know, it might be a philosophy book, and you know, who knows what it might be a book about you know bio. So so. Well, this title might interest you. It's called Mind to Lift, and uh, it's a company I started about five years ago. <laughs> In the uh, same lines. Um, yeah, actually, not exactly, because uh, I, underst I understand the context. I think I understand the, the title, but but uh, the the actual part of the of the book that I find most interesting is the last part, the wildest part, and it goes way beyond a lift. The lift is just the early part, you know, when we, we boost our own intelligence. But the real uh, interest is is when the intelligence spreads like wildfire, you know, through through the cosmos in, into transcendental scales. So, so actually one title that I kind of liked, I, I woke up in the middle of the night once with it, uh, was, was Mind Fire, because what we were talking about is something like fire. You know, once, once you make it hot enough, it ignites, you know, the, the intelligence spreads and, and grows and becomes bigger. You know, it, it was very hard to make the sparks originally to get it started, but once it starts. But, but again, my editor says, but that's kind of obscure, you know, somebody scanning their bookshelves won't know what that means. Okay. Right, so, so, so I'm probably going to have a more pedestrian title. Okay, I'll just, uh, <laughs> Thank you for your explanation of uh, what robotics mean and could mean first. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Senses are just a, a frontier thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. This is the best picture. <laughs> this is the best picture with me. That, that's the latest. Oh, actually, over, over here. My card. Over here. It's a they, common they, problem. Uh, they, they, uh, I, I, I inherit about what transgender means. We are all of us raised to believe that there are two sexes and that um, those two sexes express us in. And we know what they are. If we look around, we'll see without any trouble that there are those together. In the tradition of performance, we believe that what we are really doing is performing for each other, these two categories. For one reason or another, it's not talk right now, but what the reasons might be. But we perform these roles for each other. We perform these persons for each other because we have been taught to do that from the time that we were born. How far back? How far? We have videos of uh, married couples who go into uh, a birthing room in a hospital to see what it looks like before they have their child. And an actor playing the part of a nurse will walk up to them and hand them a baby wearing a diaper so that uh, its secondary sex organs are hidden, and say either, would you hold him for me, please, and then walk away? Or, would you hold her for me, please, and then walk away? And then we video what happens. Surprise. What happens is that in every case, that it's a little boy, a little girl, baby boy, baby girl. Just for interest, um, some of the differences are, um, if they've been told that the child is male, um, they will handle it more roughly.